Yes. <laughs> on this episode of Bondi Vet. The most beautiful cat that possibly ever existed. Scott finds a deadly abnormality in an otherwise perfect pussy cat. It does mean that her life is going to be foreshortened. There's no doubt this is an extremely strange situation. Chris races to help a mum giving birth in a very unusual maternity ward. Our girls giving birth in jail. And they're coming thick and fast right now. We need to know whether he's ever going to be able to see out of that eye. And can the team at SASH save the eye of this much-loved Aussie icon? There's really no normal tissue in there at all. It's not looking good. Come on, there's your girls. I can depend on you. Hello, Amanda. Hiya, how are you? I'm good. In Isaworth. Amanda has brought in Maine Coon cat Minnie for some important tests. Hi Minnie. Hi gorgeous girl. Shall we have a little look at Minnie? Sure. It'd be lovely. Yes, come on through. Minnie is a girl that's got everything going on. She has looks and personality as well. Hello baby. Oh my goodness. Like, she is literally the most beautiful cat in Isleworth. Honestly, it's rare that you see a cat that's so beautiful but also incredibly lovely natured as well. She's so friendly and calm. I brought Minnie in to see Scott today because she'd come in previously for her booster and a brief examination showed that she possibly had a heart murmur. Let me have a little listen to you. Yeah. I can hear a murmur. So what a murmur is, is basically just an abnormal noise between the beats. So for all her perfection, this bit's the slight imperfection. Sadly, this is not the first time Amanda's had a Maine Coon with a serious heart problem. I got my first Maine Coon, who was called Casper, a magnificent boy, about 11 years ago. I was so in love with him. Six months later, I got his half-sister, Minnie. Minnie! They've had great lives, active, healthy, and then out of the blue, about 18 months ago, Casper had a really serious heart murmur. And sadly, he passed away about three months later. So my biggest fear with Minnie is that she dies. It must have been hard for you. It was, it was which is why I'm you know, desperate to avoid the same thing. Casper had a condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a thickening of the muscles of the heart wall. Understandably, Amanda is incredibly concerned for Minnie. Hey, beautiful girl. Today is all about getting to grips with her cardiovascular health. I am a little bit nervous because, of course, we lost Casper so quickly to this devastating disease, and I just don't want this to happen again for Amanda and for Minnie. I think what we need to do today is to kind of make us all feel better about Minnie and what her future might look like. So what we'll be doing is doing a scan of her heart. Mm -hmm. We'll also do an x-ray to assess the basic size of the heart. And finally, we'll be doing a blood test. And the blood test shows us the presence of an enzyme which is released when the heart muscle is under duress. I will look after your girl today. Thank you. And uh, we'll do all those little investigations that we need to do, my love and you'll get lots of hugs and cuddles en route, won't you? Yes, you will. Brilliant. Right. All right, say bye to Mummy. Mummy. Say bye. bye. My biggest fear is losing her, but my greatest hope is that it's all being caught in time by Scott. All right. Come on then. Oh, you are so beautiful. You're all mine today. You're all mine. Yes. I do have another fear. I'm worried that Scott might actually not give her back because she's a terrible flirt. She's been laying on that table. Scott has not taken his hands off her and I'm a little bit worried. Got Minnie, the most beautiful cat that possibly ever existed. Yeah.
She's amazing, isn't she? So we'll take bloods first, but then we'll clip, we'll do ultrasound, mm -hmm. and then we'll do x-ray. Mm -hmm. Blood tests will give an indication of Minnie's overall health. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry. More detailed blood analysis at the laboratory will be done to determine how serious the heart murmur is. Okay. All right, sweetheart, okay. The next step in Minnie's diagnostic journey is performing an ultrasound, basically an echocardiogram. We want to look at the chambers of the heart, see their functionality, and see the thickness of the muscle wall. Good girl. Mm. But it's not the result Scott was hoping for. So looking at this, it does look like the walls of the heart are thicker, which means that it has to overwork, which leads to elevated blood pressure and in the end, heart failure. It does unfortunately look like she has the same condition as her brother. Unfortunately, based on the results of my ultrasound, it seems clear Minnie is suffering the same condition that Casper suffered with. And that's a really upsetting finding and it does mean that it will likely limit Minnie's life. X-ray. After the devastating ultrasound findings, X-rays of Minnie's heart provide more encouraging images. That looks good. So that's a, the heart's not very big. It's very much within the range of a normal sized heart. So that's good. That means that any disease process that's going on with Minnie is actually very early days. Girl, is that a bit stressful, was it? A little mixed bag of results for you, so we'll just have to wait and see what the bloods show, won't we? Yes. Scott now has to break the distressing news to an anxious Amanda. Hi Amanda. Hi Scott. How are you doing? Do you want to come on down? A few things to talk about. Oh, okay. So we started off, we took some bloods, just to look at her general health. That's good. So her kidney function's good, but she does have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy just like her brother, I'm afraid. This isn't a death sentence. It does mean that her life is probably going to be foreshortened. There really isn't anything that you can do. You need to give her the best life you possibly can for as long as you can. And I know you love it a bit. What's not to love? Just want to give her a big hug. I won't lie, I would have loved to have come in today and he, he would have said, oh, she's absolutely fine. <gasps> Hello, Minnie. Oh, you are such a good She's so good, isn't she? But I just give her a great time. She's very special. Minnie, are you still a bit tired? I think the early diagnosis of Minnie's condition is all important for Amanda. She was caught off guard with Casper's sudden death. Amanda's going to be like a hawk watching her beloved cat. And Amanda and Minnie are still together. More will be revealed about Minnie's future when the blood test results come back from the lab. There you go. Thanks Amanda, a million. All Thank the very best. So okay, much. you go out to sales. All right, nice to meet you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All the best. Bye. Go Minnie. Two weeks later, Scott has come to give Amanda the all-important results of the lab tests on Minnie's blood. Hi, Scott, hi, look what I've got for you. Hi, Minnie. How are you, baby girl? She's doing really well. Hey, well, I've come to see you two stunners <laughs> with some news. Great, come on in. Thank you. She seems so healthy that I'm hoping it's good news. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it... oh, sorry. On, <laughs> Bye, Minnie. <laughs> See you later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so you can see she's quite agile. Yes, she's she not, is you know, She's not worried about anything. Well, as you know, we did a blood test to specifically tell us how much under duress her heart muscle is. Yeah. In the case of Minnie, her level is incredibly low. Oh, <laughs> great, thank you. <laughs> so it's just oh. such a joy to see that. Right now, we don't need to medicate because there is no clinical symptoms to medicate. But now we know we need to be on the watch all the time. We need to be vigilant, and as soon as we see any symptoms that we can put medication into play. Our responsibility now is to give her literally the best life yeah, that you can give her. Absolutely. 
I'm just relieved. I'm relieved because I know that I'm probably not going to lose her. She's a sweet little cat. She's a dear little soul. You know, she's not a bad bone in her body and hopefully she'll just have many, many more years. This is where she likes to hang out, this river. Beautiful. I know, if you're a little cat watching the world go by. This is almost like a dream for a cat. It is. I have got so much time for Amanda. She is a real animal lover and will do everything that she can in her power to make Minnie as happy but as calm as possible. I really hope that they will live a wonderful life together. She's so good. She's a good girl. I've been an ambassador for Assistance Dogs Australia for years now and I've just had a call from their CEO, Richard Lord, to tell me that one of their dogs has gone into labour. Now, that's interesting, but what's really fascinating is where she's giving birth right now. It's 11pm and Chris is heading to a very unusual maternity ward. Our girl's giving birth in jail. At the Emu Plains Correctional Centre west of Sydney, Chris is met by the manager of security, Angie West. So we've had one puppy. Yep, one puppy. Yep. There's no doubt this is an extremely strange situation to be let into a prison to deliver a litter of puppies. It's not every day you do that. I'm Chris. I'm Jay. How are you hey, going? How are you? For 10 years, assistance dogs' pups have been raised by inmates in prisons around Australia. But this is a groundbreaking moment in the program when you remember that this is the first time ever assistance dog puppies have been born inside a prison, it's a pretty special night. And for me as an ambassador, it's one that I was never gonna miss. This is Brielle. This is Brielle. And she's just been panting like this. Panting, yep. No straining. Only pushing the pup out, yep. yep. Prison inmate Jodie's been Brielle's carer for the past four months and delivered the first puppy on her own. I knew something was going to happen. She gave me a look of help. Help me, please. I just patted her and let her know that I will be here for her the whole way through. We've got a puppy just coming out. Come just let her give her a final push. Yep. OK. And we're away. All right. Let's get this sack yep. up nice and quickly. So we're wriggling, which is good. I'm just going to tear that umbilical cord like that. Let mum do her work. The worry with a small puppy is that even a small amount of blood lost can be pretty significant. I said tie off the umbilical cord. If you just hold it there. Yeah. So that's why I go to the clamp straight away and stop that bleeding. Yeah. X-rays have indicated Brielle is expecting a huge litter of 11 puppies. The thing that I guess is worrying me right now is the fact that she's going to become exhausted no matter how she approaches this. It's going to be a long night for her. It's going to be a long night for all of us. Almost an hour since the last puppy. I just want to feel and see where these puppies are at the moment. She's still quite big, so we know there's still quite a few puppies in there. I have a very strong bond with Brielle. These pups are so special, and we've had such a big involvement in the whole process. They've become a whole world. Where's your puppies? I can feel a puppy engaged in that birth canal, and from there it should be on the fast track, on the escalator going out, but it's, it's just sitting there. The issue I have in that birth canal is it's narrow and it compresses the puppies. If it compresses those puppies for too long, then the blood no longer goes to their brain and you can lose them there. So we might give her an injection and, and get things moving. An oxytocin injection should induce stronger contractions. All right, so we're getting some contractions. Yep. Oh, look. Finally, Brielle delivers another puppy. Here we go again. She might want to see. I don't think Brielle really knows what's happening. And another contraction there. She's sitting and there's a puppy there. So they're coming thick and fast right now. Yeah, I said she had to move it along. It did. The fact is I'll take them lying down, sitting down, upside down. Whichever way they're coming, as long as they're coming out, I'm happy. Oh, here we go. We've now got five puppies out, but when you look at Mum, she's starting to look pretty tired, and that worries me because she's still got a lot of work to do tonight. And if we start to lose her, then all those puppies still inside of her are in big trouble. Here we go. Well done, girl. 
That's a big one too. Yeah. Brielle has just given birth to puppy number 10. <laughs> this one's trouble. Straight away, you know. <laughs> when they're born, it's almost like they're a member of the royal family. They can't hope to understand what lies ahead of them. They have this destiny. They'll grow into being assistance dogs. Dogs with such an incredible purpose. There's more in there. Yeah. I'm just gonna push. It's obviously been a big ordeal for her to get 10 puppies out to this point, but I guess she has to muster all her reserves for one final effort to produce this last puppy. Right now, it's really hard to tell whether Brielle's work is done or whether my work is far from over. You have a better out than him. I wouldn't know that personally, but that's what they tell me. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where's the other one? Where's the other one gone? It's been more than 30 minutes since Brielle delivered her last baby. X-rays had shown she was expecting 11 puppies, but it looks like technology got it wrong. She just looks like she is. She looks like she's satisfied. Inmate Jody and Chris are now convinced the long labour is finally over for this patient mum. So now I feel there, and I just can't feel anything else. So I think that... That's it. That's it, yeah. Ten's not bad. <laughs> not done. Well, there comes a time in a young man, man's life, where they ask you what you're going to be when you're older. And well, I can tell you. Well, you're going to be an assistance dog, aren't you? Well, this is just the start of something massive. They've got such an important role with people with disabilities. They're born to give the best to somebody that can't give the best to themselves. I would never have imagined being able to be a part of something like this. And they're in very good hands. Okay. All right, take care. Okay, thank yes. you. No problem. I would hope after everything I've seen tonight and how amazing Jodie's been, that assistance dogs might look at her and go, you'd make a pretty good puppy raiser and she can have at least one of these puppies. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're such a good girl. I can't describe the love I feel already for Brielle and these pups. Dr Chris, how are you? Good, how have they been going? Oh, great, they've just oh, grown so wow. much. Chris is back at the Emu Plains Correctional Centre to visit Jody, Brielle and the ten assistance dog puppies he helped deliver. Have we got enough? Typical prison <laughs> officer always counting. They're just bliss. Look at these animals. They are gorgeous. So oh, he's kissing me. He loves me. <laughs> it's a nice thing to come in and see the impact that it has um, with people that are working with them and also the inmates. It's life changing for them. It brings out a good side. It brings out a caring side and, and, and loving side. And I, I guess here you don't really get to show that. She's a, a very good girl. You're a good boy. Being able to give your love to these animals is gives you back your love. Within weeks, the puppies will be leaving to start their training. It's still hope Jody will be able to raise one of them here. They're gonna make a big contribution and jody has been a big part of that. It'll be a sad day mm. when they go, yeah. Morning, Bill. How are you today, buddy? How's that eye? At Sydney Wildlife World, vet Sam Gilchrist and marsupial keeper Kate are worried about one-year-old Blinky Bill. Come on, your pop, mate. That's the way. Good boy. Bill's had this problem since we first saw him emerge from the pouch. If you look at both his eyes, you can tell the difference straight away. His actual eyeball has this cloudy appearance, and part of the problem is these eyelids are a little bit malformed. That part of the eyeball is constantly exposed to the elements, and eyeballs just aren't, aren't really designed to do that. To prevent further irritation, Bill's eyes are lubricated up to seven times a day. Get these drops in again, Bill. Despite the treatment, Bill's eye is getting worse. 
it's been a long road and we make little little wins in the battle, but, but overall I don't, I don't think we're making much long-term progress with this eye. Today, Sam's taking the koala to the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash to find out if anything can be done to save Bill's eye. Well, we've just got to the stage where we need to know whether he's ever going to be able to see out of that eye. We need to talk to specialists to find that out, so big day for Bill. We'll sort it out. Sam? Hey, I am. Hi, Sam. Hi. Kelly, nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, Kelly, nice to meet you too. Hi, okay. Kate, nice to meet you. I'm hey, super Kate. excited about this. Unreal. This will be my first koala, yep. being American. D Day has arrived for Blinky Bill and his vet, Sam Gilchrist. Is he stressed at all? Or? No, he's very relaxed in there. Good. Happy to be in there. American eye specialist Kelly Caruso will decide whether anything can be done to save the koala's damaged eye. Hi, little man. Oh, he's Come on, really? There's a zipper somewhere. There's like batteries in here, right? You're delicious, huh? So let's do a couple really specific ocular tests yep. right now. I think the thing I'm hoping for is that we find some trauma and that we can fix this eye. The other possibility is that he was born with something very wrong with the eye and that we won't be able to save it. I can't see a pupil response, and I see no squint with the, with the light. It's not looking good as far as being able to save it. He's not uh, reacting in any way that would indicate that there's any possibility of vision in this eye. Oh, sweet man. Oh. I think it would be in his best interest if we take the eye out. Well, I guess, I guess deep down it wasn't, wasn't what I was hoping for. We're going to do the best thing for Bill here today and, um, you know, no, he's a good man. He is a good man. Poor Sam, I mean, he's an amazing veterinarian, but I think um, it's hard to draw that line between staying a vet and becoming emotionally attached to some of these little critters. I so wish I could save your eye, little monkey. Will you forgive me if I take it out? Hmm? The only thing we usually see here are cats and dogs, so... This is a, a rare and unbelievable opportunity to try to help one of these guys and learn a little bit more about you, huh? I think you like me. I love you. Aww. Say hello, Bill. See, even for Australians, they're excited <laughs> to see a koala. So what's happened with his eye? Why is it blue and yucky? We think he was born that way. He's had it since day one. Unfortunately, it has to come out today, but it's the, it's the best thing for Bill, for sure. Okay. You're OK. Koala anesthetics are a little bit tricky because they have a really long, soft palate. So if we take them too deep, they lose control of all that flesh, and it can actually just collapse over the larynx, and then koala can't breathe. Lift him up. Ready, three, two, one. Keen to get into it, but we need to make sure he's stable before we jump in. I'm really anxious to get him in and off the table and um, get him awake. That's, that's when I'll be able to breathe and feel good. So we just take him a little bit deeper, but not too much deeper. Okay, I'm getting 70 now. Finally, Bill has stabilised and Kelly gets the go-ahead to start surgery. So far, no reaction. So I'm just really gently and carefully dissecting through some of the tissues so that we can then lift the eye out of what's called the orbit. Now I can actually get a little bit better look in there and see that there's really no normal tissue in there at all. No matter what we did, we weren't gonna make them see again, unfortunately. Just about to get the eye out. Eye out. Okay, we're going to start closing. Sam, how's he going? Yeah, we've edged a little deep, Kelly. Suddenly, Bill's breathing becomes irregular. I'm not getting much of a blood pressure, guys. If the koala's blood pressure drops too low, it can starve the brain and other vital organs of oxygen. I'm moving fast, as fast as I can. 
I promise. Do you need to get in? No, I need you to sign up. Okay. Get him out. Get him out of here. I'm moving fast, as fast as I can. I promise. We have about three more sutures, and we'll be done. Right. Hang in there, buddy. We're almost done. Surgery completed. Wake him up. Okay, come on, little buddy. Wake up. Wake up. Come on, little monkey. Wake up. Wake up. Bill's surgery is finished, but he's taking a long time to regain consciousness. Just want him to wake up. Here he comes. There he comes. Yay, wakey, wakey. Hey, buddy. How you going? Less than an hour after the operation, Bill's recovering with his gum leaves and is ready to go home. Bye, guys. See ya. Aww. It was a success. We're really happy with the outcome. Oh, I miss him so much. He's so cute. Oh, I'm feeling much better now. It's all done. Thank God. You like that? You really do like that a bit, don't you? As for Blinky Bill, He's not only survived his surgery... He's awesome. He's, he's putting on weight and doing everything that a, that a young koala should. He's a new, improved koala. He's turned into a good boy without his eye. Very gentle with his biting. Wouldn't even call it biting. More like a kiss, I reckon. But I think for sure Bill's going to be one of our star attractions for the future. This owner's just brought in this cat. His face is swollen. She's brought in a brown snake as well. Oh, got puncture wounds all over the snake. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, four-year-old Nemo has been rushed in after being attacked by a snake. His little heart's racing. Brown snakes are probably one of the most dangerous snakes in Australia. They cause paralysis. They cause internal bleeding. They really are a very venomous snake. That face is really, really swollen. He's definitely been bitten. I think the fact that he's alive is actually quite lucky because with the brown snake, they kill within 30 minutes. Owner Jenny and her daughter Ellie managed to catch the badly injured snake. It's quite freaky putting the... Well, she did all the hard work. Putting my daughter's life on the line, putting the snake in a box. I've never seen a brown snake with a tail like that. So thin at the end. So tiny. You know, Jenny says that this is a brown snake, but I'm not 100% convinced. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get a second opinion. Nemo's attacker must be correctly identified so the right treatment can be given. So if I just pick him up behind the head with these? Yeah, just you, you and me, we're the real snake lovers here. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vic, hold this head up. Oh, the tongue came out. How's that for profile? That's great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give Tim, our snake expert, a call and show him a picture of the snake and see if he can solve this mystery for us. If it is a brown snake, we have to get antivenine into Nemo as soon as we can because if we wait, that could threaten his life. His tail goes, like, right, you know, it's skinny down to nothing. He's got like a white little spot in the front bit of his eye. You know I'm not very good with snakes, Tim. What do you think? I don't want to hear bad news. <laughs> These cats are very much a part of the family, aren't they? Yeah, there's definitely white markings on his face. OK, Tim. Awesome. Thank you so much for your help. It's a whip snake, so whip snakes are not as venomous as brown snakes. They're oh goodness, not they're deadly, which is excellent. I remember that. Um, he's really, really, really lucky. Happy on a trip, buddy. There's no antivenine for the whip snake. It does cause a local reaction, which is pretty uncomfortable. We do have to support him, put him on a drip, give him some anti-inflammatories and antihistamine. Tiny sting. 
Okay. <laughs> it's turning. It says, I don't he's like it. And he's had fangs in his face and he's jumping off the table with me giving him two small injections. I think he's had one prick too many today. In you go. While Nemo's treatment takes effect, Lisa turns her attention to the perpetrator. Nemo has had a good go at this little one. As a vet, it's our duty to treat all animals and to treat all wildlife. And this little snake, he's actually been injured as well. He's a patient too, so now we actually have to assess the snake. I think it's worthwhile taking an x-ray of him and see if there's anything that we can fix. It looks here like he's got a dislocated spine. The kindest thing to do is to put him to sleep. So Nemo's around here. So you can give him a cuddle. Hey, Nemo. Fortunately, Nemo is going to survive. We'll come back and get you tomorrow, OK? Best possible outcome, although I'm sure that Nemo is going to be not very happy spending the night away from home. He's the biggest baby, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Are you talking today? Are you talking today? Hi, beautiful boy. It's been 24 hours since Nemo was attacked by a whip snake. Nemo is so much better today. He's got over this nice and quickly. Yeah, he's done really, really well. He's very lucky that it wasn't a brown snake. Good boy, Nemo. It's quite tense yesterday. Miss Brave here, who said that she would be OK when we got home, was she wouldn't leave the other cat alone. Yeah, I missed him. Oh, there he is. Grab him out and give him a cuddle. Look at your leg. Oh. <laughs> Look at your legs. He looks so much better, doesn't oh, yeah. he? This is really lucky for Nemo because he came in with the suspected brown snake bite, went home 24 hours later just with some swelling on his face from a whip snake. Could have been a lot worse. See you later. Thanks. No bye. more snakes, little one. Hey, we don't want to see you again here. You say bye bye. Take care. Bye. I'm Dr Kate Adams and welcome to Bondi Pet, a new destination for pet health and well-being. Our site is filled with everything to fulfil your pet's needs so that you can make healthy choices for your pets.